hi everyone this is Kathy and I just got done filming vlog number two and I realized a couple of things that I just wanted to add on and I was like why not just do a different video first I want to apologize for all the ums please do not uh, cancel me because of all my ums uh, public speaking is new to me so please be patient I will slowly get those out of my vocabulary as I vlog. See, I want to do it right now. Second is, I didn't talk about how I switched the diet. There's a lot of videos out there, I think, that talk about how to transition to it. And to be honest, I went cold turkey. It was not, and that's, right, that's what you do when you're addicted to something, is you just got to stop. You don't wean yourself off. And I think that's a, what, there are people out there that I think are missing that understanding, because maybe they've never had any other addiction in their life, you know, alcohol or drugs, whatever. Um, there's an um, sorry about that. I I just said no. But the thing about this diet that can let you do that, you know, if you can hold out for a couple of days and just eat meat and fat, and you usually go high fat, and you eat so you're not hungry, it's a game changer. I had... So that's part of it. I think I just had absolute conviction that this diet was going to work for me. I've seen one too many testimonials of people healing, losing weight. I mean, some of the things are so dramatic. Uh, uh, there's an uh. Even people with autoimmune diseases that are so severe that like they lose their colon because of it and they have to wear those horrible little bags on their side the rest of their lives. They go and switch to this diet and they're, they become healed. It's, it's not overnight, but symptoms start to decrease dramatically relatively quickly. And then over the course of a year or two, it all goes away. People with such severe autoimmune diseases are getting cured. I think I have a lot of I don't think I have an autoimmune disease, but it's affecting my immune system. Uh, sugar kills, man. It's just something you've got to stop taking in. There's also a lot of videos out there that talk about the food industry. There's a book out there that talks about how the history of the food industry and the USDA. My light just went out again. I guess it needs to be charged, sorry. And, and also like, and I'll go, I'll, if you guys want, I'll go over some of that stuff, but everything has sugar in it because the people who are making this stuff know it's addictive. It's as simple as that. Like there's, there's no, haha, <laughs> there's no sugar coating that, um, it's not a conspiracy theory. It is just fact that they know. And there's even, now I heard this, I don't know how much this is true, but like potato chips have something in there that mimic neurotransmitters. So that whole shtick about you can't eat just one, that's literal. The food makes you eat more. Like how, how crazy is that? And so I was like, I'm done. I am so done. I was so tired and exhausted. I needed to do something easy that, and like I said, within two days, my brain woke up and it was like these firing light bulbs all over the place. I love it. I love it. And I'm feeling better. And I know there's going to be a lot more healing down the road. So if you can, if you get that conviction about something, it just makes it easy. Like I'd had enough. 
I was like, I can't live like this. I can totally understand how people want to kill themselves. I've never gone to that extreme in my thought process. Um, but I also was talking to God and saying, I really don't want to live to be 90. I don't want to live to be 80. I don't want to live to be 70. I do not want to be that old person in a nursing home slowly wasting away. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be that person. Now, I'm like, if I get to retire at 65 and have, you know, I'm have a nice, you know, money saved up and all of that, I can live like another 30 years past that and have fun. Like, I don't have to sit around and just deal with my health issues because I'm not going to have any. Like, how exciting those kind of thoughts I'm having that's fueling this, that's keeping me like, I don't even look at a candy bar anymore, where I was eating a couple a day um, and bread, always bread. Um, if I went out to an Italian restaurant, pasta all the way, you know, yeah, sure. Put a little chicken on there so it looks healthy, but <laughs> man, I could put down a whole plate of pasta from an Italian restaurant without blinking an eye. And you know, there are certain restaurants that when they give you a plate, it's a plate full. I didn't have any problems with that. So one other term that I hear uh, that I just learned about or terms, I should say, when it comes to quitting sugar, quitting whatever your problem food or whatever is, are the terms abstainer and moderator. And if you can't moderate how much candy you eat in a week, like, you can't walk away from it. You can't eat, like, half of it and then put it down and come back to it three days later. You can't be a moderator. You are, you have to be an abstainer. Just don't have it in the house. Just put on those, you know how horses have those little blinders on their heads, like, when they're racing so that they can't really see the horses next to them? Um, it's not just a protective thing. It's literally to keep them focused. You got to wear those at the grocery store. You, you got, cause they have all of that stuff for you to grab right as you're checking out. And then of course there's lines. So you're standing there, you're looking around, you're bored. Oh, look, there's chocolate. Chocolate is my jam. So I'm not having it. Will I ever have it again? I honestly don't know. Um, I have decades of lovely memories of eating those things um, that I can go back to in my head and not have them actually hurt me in the here and now. <laughs> uh, that pasta, you know, when I go through the grocery store and I walk through the bakery area, I just love the smell of baked bread and the smells and stuff. But guess what? Those smells are memories, just nice, lovely memories. And I know if I eat those, I'm going to feel bad. So I don't eat them. Like you just got to connect those two things. I eat this, I'm going to feel bad. That's it. Now, what could I moderate? Um, oh, pop was something else. I, sorry, I'm a Midwest girl. So I say pop. Pepsi was my jam. Uh, I got off of it for a lot, for a good while. And then I was like, I need something other than water. You know, I want something else. And so I would reach for the pop. And then the next thing I know, I'm having a second one in the day. And the next thing I know, I'm buying two six packs because they're on BOGO and they're in the house. And then I drink four. And so that's, I can't moderate it. It doesn't work that way. I got to abstain. I'm trying to think of something that I could eat in moderation and be able to walk away from it. And that's not necessarily good for you. I would probably say bread. I, you know, that, but I would eat a sandwich every day. Uh, 
And so there's the bread. Um, but I could moderate that. I think I could moderate that. I didn't think I could ever not have bread in my life until I found out about this carnivore diet. So I'm going to leave it there. Any of that little tippy tapping you hear is my little dog walking around in the room. She's wondering when I'm going to feed her, which is now. <laughs> and, um, oh shoot, there was something else I was going to say. Something else. If you feel like it, count how many ums I did on this video. Because I don't know if I did any more after I kept catching myself. But, all right. You guys have a great night or day or morning. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.